But if you revalue gold, I mean, pick a number to 10,000, 25,000, 50,000, who knows what the number is. But if you revalue gold much, much higher as the dollar implodes, then what happens to their balance sheet? Um, and, and I think we've, we've reached, I mean, I, I noticed that you've been following very, very closely following and being well ahead of the curve on the um, BRICS um, gold back currency, which I think by no coincidence uh, is about to launch on the 22nd of October ahead of the US election, if it happens, basically. And I know you've been following that and um, the effect that that is people, I think people underestimate the sheer effect of um, of that much gold being utilized as money um, is going to dr- drive the price of gold. I mean, three thousand dollars is 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 far too small an amount to actually do that. But 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 but, but Bill, just imagine. Just I mean, it, it boggles me. But just imagine when this gold becomes forty percent back, sixty percent. Currencies, but whatever, whatever the unit is, um, and we know we know that the BIS is behind it too. Um, so basically, what's if you then price uh, oil, for example, backed in largely gold grams, then what the hell is the price of oil in dollars? Because the Fed is still capping the price of gold to bolster the dollar. So suddenly, you're going to have, to me, it's a massively inflationary effect. And if if oil suddenly doubled in price, like Prozar talked about it, doubling in price, could triple in price, that would implode the entire too-big-to-fail derivative um, jumble. Right. There's two sides to that. Right there, you're talking about the real economy. Yeah. And yes, it will absolutely implode the real economy. And I do want to mention, and I talked about this uh, a little over a couple of years ago when we first had an inverted yield curve. Understand that we've had recessions without an inverted yield curve. But every time we've had an inverted yield curve after it uninverts, we go into recession. And we have now experienced the longest inverted yield curve ever. So Uninverting, I mean, this is going to be a disaster, and we're in the process of uninverting now. The twos and thirties are 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 basically flat. Uh, the two tens, uh, they're still inverted. Now, as far as you're, you're talking about the real economy, yeah, that's going to. There will be instant hyperinflation, and a better way for the average person to think about that is an instant cut, thirty percent, fifty percent. Who knows, 80, 90 percent drop in your standard of living. That's the first thing. Now let's look at the financial aspect of it. When the BRICS come out with with their currency, what that's going to do is it's basically going to shut the credit spigot off to the United States. And you're basically going to have the Federal Reserve directly monetizing any and all Treasury debt that they need to borrow. And they're borrowing a trillion dollars every three to four months. So, and let's go back a little bit. Isn't it convenient that the Fed and the Treasury were combined a couple years, three years back? So now they're they're in-house. So let's look at it as, as a pair of pants. It's the right-hand pocket borrowing from the left-hand pocket. So from a financial standpoint, uh, you're, you're going to see that this was entirely a Ponzi scheme from day one. And, and the model, the best way to describe the model, it's the never pay model. Because all you have to do is create more dollars to make payment. And it doesn't cost you anything to create more dollars. So you're paying with something that's free for you to create. Thus, you never, you never truly settle the trade. With a, a real currency like the BRICS currency or any currency that's backed by gold or some type of commodity, 
You're giving a currency that's real for something that is real. And that's the reason the BRICS even started to begin with, is because the world was getting fed up of giving real products for nothing, for for pieces of paper or digital, you know, uh, you know, digital amounts of dollars, euros, yen, what have you. Well, you know, the interesting thing is, this is only 45 market sessions away. Right. And people are asleep at the wheel. And, and, and of course, what we're seeing, we're seeing, we're already seeing every other central bank, global central bank, including the Bank of International Settlements, and all the Western and global south-facing central banks, everyone but the Fed is accumulating gold right. in size because they saw the writing on the wall. And I, it was so interesting because the, the Bank of International Settlements, on the 1st of January 2023, they obviously revalued gold as a first-year asset class. They're not, they were so ahead of the curve. They knew that this was going to happen. And the, to me, that was the, the the actual divergent point that the Fed split from really what used to be the Bank of International Settlements. I mean, Benoit Gilson, we used to watch his footprints at two o'clock every morning, six o'clock our time. You know, you'd see a sudden crash and they were gaming the market and they were all in it. There were 500 tons to up to 700 tons of swaps, closed them all. Every single one of them on uh, on the November, one month before they revalued gold as a first year asset class. And yes, the Fed has come in and borrowed, you know, maybe a uh, 116 tons or whatever, but it's on the Fed's balance sheet. But Bank of International Settlements is long gold. So to me, they, they knew, they knew. And, and when they saw Glasnev's currency being proposed, he proposed one of two. It was the option one was pretty much the kind of option that, that that the BIS is standing behind with their Enbridge unit thing. And, and he also proposed the commodity, uh, a gold-backed commodity currency, which apparently is still on the cards in combination. But 45 days from now, all these central banks, well, what are we looking at? We're looking at higher and higher and higher and higher lows. Why? Because the central banks are buying. And it's like these are higher stair steps. And 3,000, I, I mean, my, my liquidity providers tell me, well, nobody's selling anything. And 3,000 gold is, is a no-brainer. So right. this is, people are asleep at the wheel if they're not watching this. I would just say if, if central banks all over the world have been, been actively hoarding gold, there's a reason for that. And all you have to do is look at what their holdings are. And the average central bank worldwide holds maybe just shy of 60% of the reserves in dollars. And they know that that's going to implode. But if you revalued gold, I mean, pick a number to 10,000, 25,000, 50,000, who knows what the number is. But if you revalue gold much, much higher as the dollar implodes, then what happens to their balance sheet? The gold the, the gold will, will, will blow up enough to fill the black hole created by the dollars, the, the dollar value evaporating. So really what they're doing is they're, they're front running what they know is going to happen. It's interesting. I think the way that, um, this, um, BIS backed Embridge unit um, which is done in collaboration with, this is the fine, funny part. This is done in collaboration with Glazyev and, and it, it goes, it actually runs over. It's so apolitical. It, it overcomes sanctions. And it's like, this is to me, it's, I mean, I can't believe that this isn't all over Bloomberg and all the press here. This is a biggest sanction buster, uh, out there. And, and it really, as you say, um, why are the BIS involved in this? Because as you say, they, they know what's coming and they want to be on the right side of it. And they wanted to be clear of all their, uh, of, of their derivative bets 
so, and and so that they could be long. And and of course, I, and that's what I mean. I think people. I read something recently that watch out, Benoit Gilson and the BIS. He'll be smacking gold down. No, he won't. No. He's now acting to be long gold, and it's like right to me. This is this is a ch- game changer. It is a completely. You know, the old historical chart patterns that people follow, they're based in a paper market. We've now evolved to a physical market. And, and it, 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 the sky is the actual limit here. I don't know what the price is. You could, you don't know what the price is. All we know is it, it's a hell of a lot higher. Yeah. If anybody gives you a firm number as to where gold's going, they're full of crap. I mean, they're making it up. Yeah. Um, you mentioned sanctions and you also mentioned derivatives. 